Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh, Chief of Bureau with Aviation and Defense Universe. And today is a very special afternoon for us. We are here with a very popular face of the Indian industry who lead the Make in India drive for Indian Defense Forces. On this Navy Day, which has been celebrated on the theme of Swarnim Vijay Varsh, marking 50 years of India's victory in the Indo-Pak War in 1971, we are Privileged to have with us Mr. Jan Patel, Member of Executive Council of Management and Advisor, Defense and Smart Technologies to CEO and MD, Larson and Tupo. A former whole time director and member of the board of LNT as well. Welcome, sir. Thanks for giving your precious time to ADU. And to take this discussion ahead, we have with us Mrs. Sanita Saxena, Editor, Aviation and Defense Universe. Welcome, ma'am. And over to you now. Thank you so much, Ali. That was wonderful, you know, an introduction. Because every time we introduce Mr. Patil, we always feel that, you know, we're not doing sufficiently enough for the man who's done so much for the Make in India and the Atmanipal Bharat. And I think, you know, all that we've added on to it really adds on to one point that he's one person we really like to have with us in this movement of our country moving ahead in becoming self-reliant. Welcome absolutely to this show, Jayanji. We are really waiting to get to know what is going to happen and how it's going to happen in LNT as and when we near a very major day for us, the Indian Navy Day. You're welcome to ADU's chat room, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta Ji. Thank you, Chaitali. Uh, Navy Day is always uh, special. Uh, as I keep saying, uh, it's it's a very, very long, uh, I would say, association between Lassen Tubro and Indian Navy, even before it was called Indian Navy. Uh, I, I, I mentioned it to you some time back that uh, we were working with the Navy uh, in 1940s. And uh, of course, post-independence, uh, we were not wanted. Uh, I think that's the best way I can put it. But thereafter, later, uh, when the indigenous uh, movement truly was picked up by Indian Navy, having started the design organization, the VASI and varieties of things, uh, we know that uh, mid-70s, mid-80s, a very serious uh, effort towards indigenizing the Navy really began. Uh, philosophically looking at it, uh, I believe that uh, the Britishers stopped helping and supporting of all that we had out of the British Navy. And as a result, even some of our new designs, which were based on the British uh, kind of uh, warships, uh, we started building our own new hull forms and those kind of things with the naval design. And then enormous amount of equipment and systems gradually got indigenized. Now, this is an era uh, which obviously Lassen Tubro sort of re-entered uh, defense in a big way and among among the earliest I would say of that relationship in defense was with the Navy. So the uh, Navy relationship for us is uh, special and uh, we are someone who does uh, for Navy not just uh, complete uh, warships, submarines, uh, but most of the major classes of equipment that go inside a warship or for that matter a submarine. Uh, there are a whole lot of them uh, designed and built in-house. And that's essentially where uh, we go right from, call it the keel level uh, to the uh, mast level in terms of equipment. A uh, lot of what is visible out of a warship is, uh, I would say very sizably, is either from Bharat Electronics or from Lassen Tupro. A very substantial portion of the visible system, invisible what goes inside. Whole lot of electricals, whole lot of control systems a whole lot of propulsion related uh, equipment, life supports uh, equipment, the helicopter handling suites. I, I can go on on a, a long list, but all that is a matter of this journey for us about uh, four decades now with the Navy. And of course, uh, along with that, a lot that has happened with the DRDO. And some of these is where uh, Navy, DRDO, Lassen Tubro, we have had uh, found uh, some of those common subsets, which sort of con uh, uh, came together and some of the great new developments came really out of that kind of an association. So some big programs today almost uh, happening with that kind of a relationship. 
one more part which uh, to my mind uh, really started happening with the navy was uh, enormous amount of repair refits that started getting out which couple of uh, years back was not really considered uh, meaningful but navy is gradually started really looking at seriously uh, private sector and all the other yards where the refits can go outside instead of being done only in the naval dockyards now associated with that is a ppp in a way between the public sector and private sector because all of us know public sector has huge amount of order books uh, the psu ship yards as compared to that the private sectors don't and of course then there was a need that we find ways and means to work together and that's exactly our association with grsc we are building a lot of ships for them obviously the entire material package is supplied by grsc but the building aspect is what we are doing the vessel thereafter goes back to grsc to offer to navy for trials so i would say between the navy and uh, as a company as well as the psus and the company the mod uh, there there is lot of unison that one is seeing in terms of taking this atmanirbhar journey forward right sir and uh, sir when we talk of atmanirbharta we also talk of something which is you know it's been na- both indian navy and larsen and tubro have been t- uh, trail blazers you know when it comes to this which is the fact that the private sector which never had any strong say was only barely a component supplier or you know with very very less activity now has you know has come forward and you have everything possible your best you can do everything so how does that put you and the navy together so that you know they also give an option to you for a complete ship rather than giving an option to grc or uh, mazagon docks or to goa shipyard and then you just pitch in so is there something which we can do on those lines has indian navy got to you asking you that are you absolutely there we don't need to go to anybody else and will lnt do it for us can we give you such orders i think uh, right now uh, you can you can very clearly see on the policy side uh, the ministry today in dap 20 does not have a clause for nomination for warships uh the nomination now the chapter a uh, part of the shipbuilding chapter uh, chapter a says you can nominate but you can nominate not a psu shipyard now you can nominate an indian shipyard so the connotation is now it can be public it can be private if there is a need you can actually nominate that's a chapter a chapter b is all competitive chapter c is navy does the design but a competitive method by which both public or private could be considered uh, for placement of order now this is a dramatic change with respect to the past and this is as recent as in 2020 now post 2020 we haven't had too many new rfps but uh, whatever auxiliary vessel uh, rfps came out thereafter they all have been completely competitive now the big ticket items are all happening to my mind this year because beginning of this financial year we have seen the aw corvettes uh, to be coming for an aon now the aon announcement uh, has happened that it's it's a competitive program so it's a 36000 crore program uh, eight vessels all supposed to be built in a competitive mode and that's exactly what to my mind is how the future is unfolding previously these are something which uh, navy possibly would have only looked at a uh, dpsu not even a psu uh, except those two or three defense psus who possibly would have been allowed to bid the for this kind of a program and it's more of a nomination case in that case today it is uh, going to be a clearly competitive uh, soon to follow as we very clearly see are hopefully the lpds there after the new generation frigates and the new generation destroyers incidentally the corvettes i talked of are not a repeat of the previous corvettes they are now the new generation corvettes so a lot of new technologies new concepts new equipment which is getting in and that's essentially the entire new generation equipment in a way is bringing in 
uh, also embedding the new policy part that for everything you compete and win may the best man win and sir uh, you know when we talk of the various components one very major component is the fight component and uh, in the fight component sir uh, lnt defense also has forayed into all arms and equipment now uh, are we at a stage in lnt where we can say that yes you don't need to buy the fight components from from outside we can give it to you along with the ship it in can fact, be 100% uh, in fact on the system side uh, you, you said it very right we actually don't need to import anything uh, ask me there's uh, whether it's a uh, anti submarine warfare system air defense system surface to surface warfare surface to air warfare we don't require any system to be imported what we still do not have in each of these segments are the actual armament the physical weapon and some of them like the aw we do have our own torpedoes now the lightweight obviously is uh, within service the heavy weight still uh, almost at the last phases some amount of delays on account of the covid at the last uh, phases but we are about there uh, in terms of uh, i would say ship to land uh, as well as anti ship we have the best of the weapon system in the form of brahmos or even the bigger weapons now when it comes to the air defense that's a segment we are little weak today but uh, those systems are getting actually developed a very sizable amount of new programs are under uh, execution uh, i i i must say that uh, the close in weapon system used to be yet another one which used to remain imported and earlier days it used to be always uh, imported from russia now of course uh, lasen to bros uh, close in weapon system has been uh, trial tested Uh, gone through enormous amount of testing and evaluation by air force and we decided this proven weapon system can very simply be navalized and stabilized onto our naval platform and uh, the good part is uh, the user in need uh, is the one who makes a quick decision and we found an uh, export customer for this and we have an export order so while our process of starting the acquisition process is yet to begin uh, discussions have begun uh, thinking that possibly it needs to for future become indigenous has started there's an export uh, client who actually is in need and he he is he is actually placed a contract so essentially gone are the days where you will only make a weapon system purely for navy and to my mind if we can have some commonality and specific changes adaptations of those weapon systems right across this is exactly the role which to my mind the cds has in terms of integrating the armed forces the basic weapon with some changes can always be adopted across the services and that gives a commonality that provides the scale the scale will provide economy right Now, that's a, that's a way to um, moving forward so we today have a close in weapon system of our own air defense we have done in the past of course we don't have a weapon still and uh, as lasen to bro we have clarity that uh, the government has always placed weapons primarily on the government sector as long as it comes from within the country one doesn't need to do everything and sir for the float component is everything uh, if you get an order is everything made absolutely in uh, by lnt in india with your supply chain indian supply chain in fact in float component starting with the steel to the hull to varieties of systems that get uh, fitted on uh, my belief is we truly don't need anybody today because there's in excess of 90 95 Uh, percent actually uh, can be done here and the warship that we ourselves are designing and building today although our track record is only up to an opv and now of course uh, we are looking forward to doing little bigger in terms of uh, scale and size of uh, warships uh, these are something which uh, we know that there is very little that need to be imported on the float a move still remains uh, eluding and there's a very simple reason for the move to be eluding it's not a matter of capability it's a pure case of volume 
because a naval engine or a naval propulsion equipment they are too few needed and too far now for that you can't build and scale a kind of an uh, economic model around unless a customer wants to say that i will buy it from you for next 100 vessels next 50 vessels or next 10 years or next 15 years now you can't do those kind of investments and it's not true about only lasan to bro i'm talking of anybody if let's say an engine maker today has to come and put it up in the india we know kirloskar used to do engines up to a certain size but kirloskar went out of that business because it was not you know uh, remunerative having in, making investment and thereafter waiting for an order every time on an l1 basis just does not make sense now this is precisely where the policies need to actually evolve and uh, must go back in history i think uh, manohar parikar when he was the minister he had actually seen this and he came out at that point in uh, in time a policy initiative to actually say i am i am going to be a long term buyer now that initiative came almost to last phases but stopped short as he moved out now we actually need those kind of uh, uh, policies today in place alternately today the same thing can be done under uh, newer uh, and more modern uh, methods we have a make one programs <coughs> under, <coughs> under make one if we get it done it remains indigenous and there is a commitment of purchase right absolutely and sir uh, you had a very major role to play in the nuclear submarine and uh, we have india is in need of submarines so what is the and what is the percentage level which lnt has for manufacturing submarines can it go ahead and tell indian navy we are here we can do it for you give us the order in fact uh, you you touched a very uh, right kind of a uh, subject uh while the country does build uh, all of us know uh, country does build uh, strategic vessels and for varieties of reasons that's very little spoken about and uh, i'll avoid speaking specifically on that program but the capability is built because of that today have been leveraged and i must say that uh, where do you begin you have to make a new beginning somewhere so we started uh, developing uh, about 4 5 years back our own mini submarine these mini submarines were tendered out in 2009 and thereafter in 2010 11 and uh, both the times lasan tubro was actually a single party and that time we didn't have our own full fledged design uh, a concept design a very very sketch level concept design was available from naval design and we said we'll take it on from that stage with our in house capabilities we will grow it to a stage where we can make a full fledged port now this is something which remained behind we know that the program thereafter didn't happen although it was nominated to a defense psu and thereafter of course nothing happened for a decade we began on our own four years back to develop a full fledged completely new mini submarine a midget submarine a 5 to 600 ton class boat today the basic design exists so the the weakness in indian system was that you didn't have the capability of a basic design once a basic design was there detailed engineering onwards right up to the manufacturing technologies the material the equipment the systems we we can do all that now irony in our cases we could build it but we always remained at the mercy of a foreign technology provider because he had the basic design now here's those four years of effort which essentially has converted uh, the effort into a tangible uh, kind of a buildable design and that's exactly where we are started talking globally about it now last one and a half year we are openly talking about uh, lasan to bros in house design submarine and this is going global in terms of uh, uh, talking to various people now since the uh, naval uh, or the remote rfi is in public domain currently there is an rfi on a mini submarine it exists so navy is now opened up to looking at uh, this uh, model for going forward and hopefully we will see some action 
the the intermediate size typically the conventional uh, submarines that we today look at about uh, say anything between 1500 to 2500 ton class uh, today to my mind uh, given certain number of years this is something which can completely be run in house i mean in house when i say by us certainly i am sure the other yards because the moment one company start doing something the others who are going to chase so otherwise they are out of the game so i'm sure there are going to be more than one who would try and build these kind of capabilities and that's essentially where it should be so if we are looking at future acquisitions we certainly can aim a future acquisition problem for submarine fleet is we don't have the fleet size today so we need it urgent and that's where the relevance of the strategic partnership whatever is happening on the program that's certainly moving but future i don't see there's a need i i am i'm absolute firm believer that for anything on land and naval domains we don't require anything to be imported in case of air force except for the flying machine we don't need anything to be imported we can do it here and i i i i'm saying it not only as lasan to grow i've been a president and a, before that a vice president of sidm so 6 years i have seen the entire growth of industry i know that nothing in which industry coming together cannot do yes sir and uh, i i think that's a very positive note you know to be in and uh, india definitely is moving ahead and we we have seen that that is that international uh, you acclaim which is really there at the moment is very surprising but lnt played a very big role in getting that for us when you got that repitting of the uh, foreign naval ship it landed in chennai and your uh, you know at your base and then I mean, it was a big story for everybody Absolutely. so i did that did you take it forward did you take it forward from there and do you have this sort of uh, collaboration with the various navies of the world that if you are passing by and you need mro do come to us we are here in, in fact i must tell you that uh, as, as as a whole uh, indian defense including the ministry and uh, full marks to uh, you know the ministry of defense uh, led right from uh, uh, you know the minister down uh earlier era uh, we have never heard of uh, our uh, secretary and the minister talking about uh, our capabilities and goods uh, outside and uh, it it was a buyers uh, market here but uh, i i must say that this ship that came which you referred about uh, charles view uh, the, the american vessel the process began in february in a 2 by 2 dialogue and you can imagine two by two dialogue when we say there is external affairs and defense minister and the secretaries and at that level when the dialogue starts within few months we have seen the first vessel uh, actually carrying on and uh, coming uh, down now having that uh, been done and behind us we know that there is an extremely large fleet of the us navy which is in this part of the world and this fleet is uh, much much larger than the fleet that indian navy has and uh, given the quad uh, we see that uh, this fleet along with this uh, friendly nations uh, fleet they actually are going to be sort of putting a common show and when it's a common show it also means use of common facilities rather than uh, inefficient ways of doing the repairs and refit somewhere else and that's essentially where it's moving we hope uh, and uh, wish and obviously as uh, we uh, we understand from the ministry uh, more and more is uh, hopefully in pipeline and will become a reality so that's really great i think you know india is really moving ahead it's we've been seeing this change uh, jayanti it's not that uh, it's sudden such a gradual change when india used to be you know just a buyer and suddenly you are a manufacturer and you also can do the best of mro and suddenly not very suddenly but yes we were very good when as far as our brains were concerned and the indian brain always has been uh, an asset to everybody abroad but uh, la- you know very recently uh, uh, the indian navy 
also wanted you to become a knowledge partner and you signed an mou what is that for uh there are just two companies in uh, india who enjoy a very special relationship with uh, indian navy and uh, this is something which uh, i remember the concept came more on the basis of what used to happen between india and russia uh, we all know of irigc now with the population of equipment uh, from both bharat electronics and laser to grow growing across platform i would say today we are about uh, 80% of naval fleet uh, we are present on at least 110 vessels i'm not including coast guard coast guard is a different story there is very sizable part of coast guard that has been designed and built by us besides of course equipment on many more ships but in case of uh, navy when we reached this or about to be reaching there about i would say 7 8 years back there was a proper thinking that uh, we we now need a different level of uh, process in where uh, on partnership basis we need to be talking because something uh, le- let's say you supplied 5 years back 10 years back 15 years back as a matter of routine uh, matters are reported wherever as an oem uh, the navy needed services or support which was anyway happening but uh, to take it to a strategic level uh, needed some specific forum to be created so the irigc model was adopted first with indian i would say bharat electronics and thereafter with uh, lasan to grow so there are these meetings that take place at a definite frequency at both east and western uh, i would say uh, dockyard levels and thereafter also happens at the highest technical level within the navy that's at the chief of materials level so this is a process uh, we actually have seen that uh, to some extent we are moving back into the era when navy genuinely started indigenizing that you could talk of some new concepts you could talk of how to do it better we started talking of models by which uh, they don't have to worry about the availability of a person because if there is an amc model that we think of then the amc model the responsibility moves into a corporate shoes and he has to gra- guarantee it within that particular time or number of number of hours now this is where the relationship actually has moved on and that is precisely what you see in form of uh, what's today happening with bell and larsen to grow it's out of sheer number of uh, equipment of the population uh, right across the navy and that's essentially where it's needed so there's some give and take that always keeps happening some pro- uh, place where something can be done some place where you wait for an opportunity to have something new started new concepts freely get discussed and talked as a part of these meetings and of course as a part of that we know the navy is very serious about indigenizing there is a niio so through that uh, new programs are taken up for development which earlier days used to happen in the professional directorate then there are no formalized mechanisms of it today there are formalized mechanism which pick up out of that so uh, we see that uh, these uh, meetings to truly create uh, that relationship of uh, you know being partners and that relationship of trust where you freely come out with i am having multiple problem with this and this may not be your equipment but it's an equipment supplied since you do something similar can you address things so the relationship is now going beyond this elanti equipment and looking after because obviously if there is a knowledge person available uh, there is a best man to g- give an opinion in terms of what needs to be done if there is an operational problem that the armed forces have and that's exactly what is getting leveraged and so uh, you know there is one very important program of the government of india at the moment which is skill india now skill india uh, has programs for uh, the three forces but you know we do have programs uh, the private sector participating in the movement by becoming uh, you know uh, part we becoming uh, trainers and in such a case sir any you got the nsdc and then you got the councils and so in that case uh, do does lnt play a role to skill the people who come from the navy we have a you know we have the soldier retiring early 
the sailors retiring early they we have the technical manpower they retire early they are just best manpower they have practical experiences but they do not have uh, certification now is the lnp planning something uh, keeping this in mind to absorb this huge manpower which is skilled but uh, not on paper so how uh, is there a plan are you doing something about this problem i must tell you at uh, a very very top level in the skill development council uh, you you may be aware that uh, mr naik was the chairman of the nsdc now this is essentially where it began and thereafter we started uh, training the trainers we don't train the number of people directly but those who are training them we believe that if you if you have a great teacher created the teacher creates hundreds thereafter so we started a program one of lesson to bros complex uh, out in bombay but uh, mud island uh, factory that was virtually uh, not functional was converted into this training center and we've been training for last two years uh, we call it the trainers it's train the trainers and we are not just looking at train the trainers for the purpose of the skill uh, we are, we are putting beside the skill in terms of the vision that they need to be building the kind of leadership that they need to be imparting into people now with this we see that wherever they go back and train uh, we get a feedback from uh, those who run those training establishment that what did you do to my guy he was there with you just for a couple of months or one month two month but he's come completely changed now this is essentially where the lesson to grow model where there is no owner we need to generate our next generation of leadership and that's exactly where we have found that sweet spot which obviously we can contribute and that's what has been happening specific to navy and uh, to the other armed forces what we started doing was uh, multiple of my new factories because defense today we we run out of uh, six major factories and uh, many of them being dedicated for defense we started recruiting far far larger number of fresh graduates if our requirement was let's say x 100 uh, we now started taking two and a half times x and after that one year of training we let 100% go out the balance 50 stay with the 100 that we possibly would have needed so 1.5x continues for yet another year and after two years we we have our 100 who remained uh, with us and we would have by then released 150 skilled highly skilled people not just doing work with their own hand but in various other cadres and that's essentially where we believe we contribute to building the atmanirbhar in defense because this skill set did not exist in the country from fundamental technology to doing it on the shop floor a skill set that the industry never built so we been otherwise in all our lot of public sector as well as the ordnance factories primarily dependent i mean exceptions like bell hl may be there but the fact is the whole lot of other uh, uh, you know organizations which were government controlled remained on tot driven uh, methods and obviously since the market was assured and non growing there was no need of skill from outside they could generate their own skills through the apprentices and that was good enough now when we start growing we truly find that necessity and that's where we are doing the third angle to this is people who come out i must tell you there are few hundred in lassen to grow today so obviously uh, we do see the good ones out of that who probably are worthy of uh, you know open mind or the ability to do things you start seeing some basic basic i would say things beyond just a matter of 15 years or 20 years of uh, service you start looking at what these people can be leveraged to and wherever you see that you try and recruit them and you start try, try and build a completely different person out of that same person cuz now he start seeing not purely from the operator shoes he knows the operations and how to how to deal with it but he also knows how to build it then he knows how to design it now how to integrate now this is where we start seeing that the domain of operations 
now is getting back uh, integrated backwards into the upper side of the entire value chain right from basic design and as a result your system tend to be far more user friendly and this is a contribution which only arm forces can make and that's happening today in the industry yes that's a relationship between the veteran and the industry which Absolutely. gives a second career which is actually uh, you know boon and also that you know you get a manpower which is very very technically sound they just need to fall into place and you know i think it's a win win for both of you in that case you said it in fact uh, we believe that uh, if you really want to do a serious equipment development you need the operations feedback into it and the operations feedback cannot come from anywhere while you may have people who understand the basics of technology but the implementation side of it is not really known and that's essentially where this collaboration really works right thank you so much jnj it was so wonderful speaking with you and as always you know when we come out of an interview with you we really come out with so much more knowledge background with which we have sat at the beginning of the you know interview i think thank you so much for it and always you know indian navy any indian navy day cannot go without having a word with you having lnt into the folds of our special section and special coverage which we do for the navy and i think it's just a great relationship where we see the force growing with the private sector being its absolute push behind thank you so much for being there absolutely thank you thank you sangeeta ji thank you so much sir thank you. Thank you in fact Italy. yes as uh, we were talking in the beginning as we said nobody no defense forces or any any psu or anybody related with defense forces of india can't think anything i mean they can't think without you they need you everywhere so you that's what is you you have been taking a lead and that's you all you told us everything about that in this uh, show today thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thanks for your all time and uh, we take from here thank you so much sir have a thank nice you. day bye bye bye, bye.